combat mission is a turn-based tactical war game with real modern forces, fully 3D, and it uses a WeGo system, which means that both sides enter their orders and then it executes simultaneously, so it gives realistic results, which is something that uh, works really well for uh, the wargaming side of DSTL. Wargaming is really important in DSTL because it allows us to um, interact with um, the forces um, and to strategize and to plan uh, operations without huge amounts of money. Um, it allows players to make decisions on the spot so that we can actually analyze and, and decide how they're making those decisions and then see if there's any, any analysis that we can do as a result of them. Um, and it's also important to, to remember the distinction between manual wargaming and, and digital wargaming. They both have a place within uh, the STL. Wargaming is a tool that we use in DSTL uh, for a variety of reasons. So we use it to uh, define new concepts, we use it to you know, investigate analysis, basically it provides evidence for the military to improve their decision making. A lot of war games that the military run, you don't, you don't challenge it, you don't challenge the players particularly, it's there to help them learn doctrine and kind of get used to the, the idea of planning and things like that. What we're really interested in is pushing those people to their their limits in terms of what they can do on the fly against a thinking opponent that's really trying hard to stop them from winning. So we used our drones early in the game, so we launched them as soon as we could actually on turn one to, uh, to scour objective coffee to make sure uh, we could find some, some enemies hidden in that village, which was brilliant, allowed us to then call in fires immediately. So we started to hit in particular the, the church tower which has provides the highest um, point across the whole of the map actually. So we wanted to make sure we leveled that, which we did quite effectively. And in the last turn, we've just canceled the, the operation over Objective Coffee because we feel we've now contained that and we're pushing the drone forwards to the corner to actually anticipate the blue forces coming in from that edge. Absolutely. In terms of artillery, artillery has been absolutely crutial for fixing blue on Objective Coffee. Uh, the artillery, we had some precision fires going in to take out key terrain features that we thought were uh, most dominant. Uh, but then we also put in some area fires to stop Blue being able to manoeuvre in their rear area. Uh, that was successful and fixed Blue into uh, garrisoning buildings, uh, which we could then attack with direct fire systems. The situation as it stands is that that enemy reinforcement column has come down uh, the western side of Objective Milk and Objective Coffee, led by main battle tanks. Uh, and they've they started to push in to Objective Coffee from the, the northwest, uh, along with the forces that were already in Objective Mill. Additionally, uh, they've put an anti-tank uh, screen out quite far uh, to the west there that may have eyes on the reinforcement route of uh, B Company uh, coming in. So this leaves us in a, a little bit of a, a dilemma of how best to use the B Company group as they come in so they don't run straight into that uh, anti-tank screen the anti-tank screen it basically denies our west our our left flank completely for any maneuverous approach on from the left hand side um, so we, we're kind of being not completely forced but we are being shaped into going mm -hmm. we're right flanking almost bags of smoke up the middle there's two options as, as much as we'd like to take you know here under nine degree angle yeah. that means we've got to defeat that anti-tank screen first the ground, I think, does allow it because it does rise up, but again, you are going to take a certain amount of risk on what you lead with. We wanted to create a scenario that basically has this kind of urban bit on the side to do some kind of close-in fighting, but then also a wider area to allow for manoeuvre. If we're just in a pure urban scenario, you don't get, it's not necessarily that interesting, it's more just like a slogging match, basically. A lot of war games that happen, like particularly ones that the military do, are very rote, they're very scripted, they're very set. What we try to do with this scenario is present them with a, a tough challenge that has a number of different solutions, that has a number of different ways that red can play it, and then blue has to respond to those different ways. The purposes of the game today was to help us to understand better how they use the software. So we have regular conference calls with the DSTL team uh, where they'll go through uh, features and addition ch changes they want for the professional version. That's directly with the users straight to the development team and that's really good to have that close uh, cooperation between the user and the developer um, because if the developers don't understand the purpose of why a feature is trying to be implemented then it can really add confusion or you don't get the, the end result you're, you're aiming for. 
and one of the reasons for me being here today is to see how they use it in practice and that really helps us to have a deeper understanding of the the way that they want to do things and we can see where the the pain points are with the software uh, to help uh, make it easy to use or to uh, work around some challenges that maybe the software wasn't designed to do but the military has a certain way of doing things or a requirement that a commercial customer wouldn't have. 